Well, good afternoon, friends and members of St. Martin Lutheran Church. This is Pastor Jim taking a look at some of our scriptures for this week. Today we'll be looking at our psalm for this week, Psalm 113. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at our gospel lesson for uh, this week, which is pretty much understood as the most difficult parable that Jesus ever told to, to understand. So we're going to tackle that tomorrow. But today we're going to take a look at Psalm 113. Uh, it's one. It's known as one of the Hallel Psalms, and more specifically, one of the Egyptian Hallel Psalms. Uh, Egyptian being for its connection with the Passover, and uh, uh, Psalm 113 to Psalm 118. These five Psalms are are known as these Egyptian uh, Hallel Psalms, uh, sung during the Passover ceremony, uh, sung today during the Passover ceremony. Um, uh, the words we're going to find are not only sung during Passover today, but were spoken uh, by Hannah, were spoken by Mary, were spoken by Jesus himself at, at the Last Supper. And so Psalm 113 is a very common psalm of praise. It has all the structure of a normal cause of praise. There's a, there's a call to praise the Lord and then explanations for why we're to praise the Lord. And then it concludes with another call to praise the Lord. So Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord and from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives a barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, uh, as mentioned, uh, one of the uh, five Egyptian Hallel Psalms spoken and sung during, during the Passover meal. Uh, and it begins with this triple call to praise. Now, many of you, maybe in Sunday school, remember singing the song, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. I, I remember I sang that as a kid. I don't know if kids still sing that song today. Um, I think maybe uh, uh, only the older people will, will remember that song. But that song, Hallelujah, 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 that's actually the Hebrew. Uh, ha- it, it begins with praise the Lord. That's Hallelujah, praise Yah, the Hebrew word for Lord. And then praise the Lord, Hallelujah, praise Hallelujah, O servants of the Lord, Praise, hallelujah, the name of the Lord. And, and, and it specifically singles out to praise, O servants of the Lord, that, that the servants of the Lord have, have really an honor in sharing in this great work of praise and, and of worship. And uh, everyone really has reason to praise the Lord. Servants of the Lord have even more reasons, the psalm suggests. And then verse 1 ends with, praise the name of the Lord. And we've spoken about this before. But when we hear that phrase, name of the Lord, it, it means, it, it goes well beyond just, just honoring the name. It's, it's really exalting Yahweh himself and all that his character represents. So by, by way of comparison, when we conclude a prayer with, in, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, what we're saying is we're not just invoking Jesus' name for some you know, spiritual reason. When we pray in Jesus' name, we're praying with with the understanding of everything he came to do and has done. To pray in the name of Jesus is to pray pray for his incarnation and 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 his ministry and, and his crucifixion and his death and his resurrection and his ascension. That's what it means to pray in the name of Jesus, and that's what it means to praise the name of the Lord, to praise all that his character means to us. It, it really has to do with praying in the name of Yahweh, praying the name of Jesus, is, is praying with the understanding of the revelation of who God is. 
And now the psalm is going to go and, and sort of answer that question. What does it mean to pray in the name of Yahweh? What does it mean, mean to pray in the name of Jesus? What well, means to pray with the significance of everything they represent, everything they represent. And so verse 2, blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So again, the name, the character of God and all that he reveals himself to us is to be praised. Um, and, and, and blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, praise him with the utmost intention and extension of spirit and speech, as one author wrote. That God is therefore called by, in, in, in the official uh, literary term, is the appellate proper, and that is the blessed one, the blessed one. And, and, and you know, in this great sort of repeti rep repetitive Hebrew poetry, um, this, this sort of pattern of repetition in verse 3, from the rising of the sun to, to its going down, you know, telling us that this praise of the Lord, this isn't just something that's meant just to be done in a, in a worship setting when we come to church or when we're in, in prayer, but our, our very lives uh, being lives as one in praising the Lord. And, and, and verse 4 is going to say why. Well, why in verse 4? Well, the Lord is high above all the nations, his glory above the heavens. So God's glory extends above the earth and above the heavens. And, and this is the, the sort of scriptural or biblical understanding of if you were going to divide the cosmos, if you will, into three sections, there'd be three heavens. There's the, the first, which is earth itself, and then the area above the firmament or above the atmosphere, that's the second heaven. And then there's the third heaven, which is God's glorious throne room. And I don't think our earthly minds will ever be able to, to fully capture it because we, you know, we can only judge upon the things we see, right? But, but God sits above all of this and, and God looks down. And in verse 5, the, the psalmist here in Psalm 113 almost mirrors David's words when David, David says, Who am I, Lord? That that you would consider me, you know. Who who you know, just me, this 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 creature of flesh and blood, who am I that that you would look upon me and give me your graces? And in verse five, who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high? who looks far down on the heavens and the earth. And this idea to this looking down, it, it's not just a gazing, but it's an, an interacting. And some translations even, even have, he who humbles himself to behold the world, that, that God humbles himself, that his interest in, in creation, and especially mankind, is, when you think about it, remarkable. I mean, this, this sort of thought led Luther to once say, you know, if I were God, I, I would hammer this world to pieces uh, because of how sinful and rebellious we are. Uh, and, and, and what's the reason for praise then becomes, because he who sits high above the heavens and the earth, uh, he, he regards the lowly. Um, in verse 7, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. That verse 7, he raises the poor out of the dust. That when God in the heavens beholds things or looks down upon the earth or humbles himself to interact with the world, he sees the poor down in the dust and the needy in the ash heap and he and he raises them up. You know, these very words, consider this, these very words of Psalm 113, uh, Jesus sang on the night of his betrayal. They were celebrating the Passover. Um, and, and, and think of the irony there in Jesus saying and singing, he raises the poor from the dust when he himself would be lifted from the dust, from the grave to the highest place, all for our sake. Hannah in the Old Testament sang this song when she learned she was going to give birth. When Elizabeth uh, commended Mary and congratulated her on her pregnancy, Mary sang these words, that he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap in the Magnificat. That he grants the barren woman a home. That 
you know, one of the ways in lifting the poor and the needy to a high and honored place is we have a picture here of a, of a barren woman giving birth. And, you know, we see, especially throughout the Old Testament, Sarah and, and, and Rachel and Hannah and, and Elizabeth and, and Mary and others, you know, instances of the miraculous power of God uh, literally fulfilling the words of this psalm. And then the psalm concludes again with the same words that it begins with. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Soren Kierkegaard wrote uh, a, a story, a, a parable in a sense, about a, a prince who fell in love with a peasant woman, but understanding that his, his royalty, he would never really know if she loved him, uh, knowing he was royal. He pretended to be a peasant, fell in love with her, and then they got married. And, and Kierkegaard says, in, in a sense, that that's what God did for us in Christ, that uh, God doesn't ever force our praise upon him. God doesn't force us to sing praises to his name, to his being. But he came to our world, sort of in Kierkegaard's words, disguised as a carpenter's son. He, just like in Kierkegaard's story, he laid aside his royalty. It's kind of the theme Paul uses in Philippians 2, that he, he did not consider his divinity something to be to be used, but set it aside, set it aside, that he, he laid aside uh, all the trappings that come with royalty um, to reach out to you to ask for your love, to ask for your love. And so with all of these ideas in mind of Psalm 113, of the Passover, the very fact that, you know, think about it, uh, uh, it, it, it re, in a sense, reiterates David's words of who am I? Uh, Hannah saying these words, Mary saying these words, Jesus saying these words uh, on the night of his betrayal. Uh, Praise the Lord, because he looks down upon the heavens and in Christ, he lifts you and I up from the dust and carries us to the heavenly places. So that's Psalm 113. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Receive the Lord's blessing. Be a blessing to others. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord uh, at, at all times, at all times. And uh, love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow when we take a look at Luke chapter 16 and the parable of the unjust or the shrewd uh, steward or manager. So thank you again, guys. I will talk to you soon. Have a blessed day.